I'm Seth Stiles for John Hart Real Estate, and we're about ready to go into Donridge, uh, the famous home of Tony Duquette that's now owned by his protege, Hutton Wilkinson. Hey. Hi, Seth. Here's Hutton. Hutton, Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Come on in. Come on in, watch your step. So this is it. Welcome to Donridge. Wow. It's uh, Tony Duquette's house in Beverly Hills. The New York Times said that Tony Duquette was the first designer of the 21st century because of his ability to reuse materials. So the house, so it's, it's called the grandest house in Beverly Hills sometimes, but it's actually the smallest house in Beverly Hills. From the front door to this wall, and from that wall to that wall, it's a 30 by 30 foot box, 900 square feet. Uh, the architect was Casper Emke, who became a famous Beverly Hills and Los Angeles architect. So of course he wanted to do a very modernist house, and Tony wanted a little Venetian palace. But if you strip everything away, it's actually very modern. Well, let's show you the whole garden. Okay. So you can see it. There's this. The chandelier here hanging in the middle of the room. We decorated that in the 1970s. You can see over here, this is a giant 28 foot tall phoenix bird, uh, which was the centerpiece of the exhibition. Then around the garden, you'll see other, other phoenix birds. And then even in the interior of the house, we have smaller ones. The house is alive. It's, it's, we move things around, we change things, we paint things, whatever we feel like doing. If, if Tony Duquette were to walk in today, he wouldn't recognize the placement, but he'd recognize the things, because they were all things that he owned at some point. I'm buying things back all the time, things that he's designed for other clients. I buy everything back. So th this is the only property left on the street that has the original ravine, the, the you know, it was a, and the original name of the house was called Fiddler's Ditch. After we bought the house, there was eight days of rain and a little puff of wind, and one tree hit the other, fell down like dominoes, and sm there was a house here from Thailand, and it smashed the house into a million pieces. So it gave me a place to build a lake, but I could afford to put a two foot deep pond, and that's what I did. And I found that boat in a shop window on Beverly Boulevard. I slammed on the brakes, and I went in, and I said, I'll take that boat. And then after I bought it, I said, well, what is it? They said, it's a Vietnamese wedding boat. And after they get married, two Vietnamese people sit in that boat and stare at each other, I guess. <laughs> anyway, so I put the roof ends from the old Thai house that fell down and the lotus blossom, painted it red and green. And, um, and so there it is. The temple there was, was built on the foundations of the old house, but I had three arches from that I bought in India, and I realized they were carved on both sides, so I sliced them down the middle, and I got upstairs and downstairs. And so you you create like this was the lake that you created. Yeah. And this wasn't here. It wasn't here until like sometime after 2000. After 2000, I think Tony would like it, and I built the house next door. That's where I sleep, and then this is the swimming pool to making the waterfall. It's almost a botanical garden. It's, it, nobody's ever been here to. Uh, catalog at all, but it's a famous garden. And I am not a garden person. I, I have black thumb. I'm not really allowed in the garden. So we should get out of here in a hurry before it all dies. But um, I'm an interior guy. Okay. And, uh, and that's what I like. Well, let's all see right. the interior. So this is the garden room here. Wow. And it was a one car garage back in 1949. And through behind that screen is the is the garage door and the streets on the other side. This is where we have cocktails and we have lunch and and the sofas I bought back they were made for Tony's studio on Robertson Boulevard. There's jewelry here. There's just display jewelry. This is his modern fruit from his show at the Louvre. I see a lot of the bird cages. And we love bird cages and yeah, they're really great. Some of them are 18th century and they're great. There was the house that fell down in the garden after eight days of rain. And this is a great little room. It's comfortable. It's you know the, everything's cozy. We can all pile in here. I made this chandelier. All the coral branches are just stuck in like a florist. You sneeze and they they fall out. <laughs> so now we'll go and see the library. All right, that sounds great. I made this the dining room, but it was too close to the kitchen and too noisy. So that I put the so that's the dining room. And we have such a great time there because the ceiling is so low. And there's his poster from a show at the Louvre, 1951. Oh, and an albino tortoise shell. It's pretty good as well. Wow. Yeah. That was his pride and joy, that albino tortoise shell. <laughs> then this is the uh, monkey room. And the oh monkey room gosh. is where, it's a glassed-in porch, but it's where we have dinner. <laughs> and we have really fun parties here. And the conversation is really good because the ceiling is so low. Everyone is just like that. And an oval table, you can get really good conversation around an oval table. This is my only regret with Tony. I wish he had had this set up while he was alive. He would have loved sitting here watching the, the plants and things. So, yeah. so anyways, but this is, it's a good dining room. So that's Donridge. My dream is to give it away to an, uh, 
you know, to a university or to an institution. Because it's, it's, you know, he was the first American, the only American ever one-man exhibition at the Louvre in Paris. And he owned a lot of real estate, but this is the only one he, he built from scratch. So it's, I think it's worth saving.